I'm Owen Evans, I'm a doctor of chiropractic and owner of Backspace Chiropractic in London. During this coronavirus lockdown, more and more people have been reporting an increase in their stress and anxiety levels. Many of our patients feel that their symptoms are worse as a result or even wonder if perhaps their problems could have been caused by these emotional states. The short answer is yes. Most people have heard of the fight or flight response. It's a physiological change that occurs in our bodies in response to stressful situations. The release of the hormones cortisol and adrenaline into our bloodstreams prepare us to fight or to run away from the threatening situation. Only unlike in the old days when it would have been a dangerous predator, the stress is often psychological like worrying about the effects of lockdown on our lives. Among the effects of these hormones is an increase in muscle tone. But we don't always use that increased tension for any purpose, so it can often accumulate in our muscles and exert additional force on our joints. Many of you will be familiar with tight bunching trapezius muscles, grinding your teeth maybe due to the stress, perhaps you're even doing that in your sleep. That can then proceed to cause tension type headaches, jaw pain, neck pain, shoulder pain and even lower back pain to name a few. Combine those effects with poor posture, being overly sedentary and working from home and you have the recipe for all kinds of musculoskeletal problems. So here are my top six tips. Number one, stress can aggravate or prolong pain. So if stress is a problem you need to recognize it at an early stage and try to do something about it. You can't always avoid stress but you can learn to reduce its effects by controlled breathing, muscle relaxation and mental calming techniques. And one of the best antidotes for stress is exercise. Which brings me to number two. Try exercise which is a bit slower, like yoga, tai chi or pilates, as opposed to those fast power-based exercises like high intensity interval training or running. Those can actually cause further increased release of adrenaline and cortisol, making the problem worse. Number three, treat yourself to a bath, but put magnesium salt in the bath. Magnesium is great for your muscles, great for your nervous system, and has even been shown to help with sleep and depression. Number four, meditation, or even simply focusing on your breathing for as little as five minutes can have a really profound effect on your mood. The key is to focus on your breathing. And if you're already a fan of meditation, try a body scan type meditation. That will help you to connect with your body. Take deep breaths into your abdomen and scan your body in your mind from the crown to each facial feature, down the neck and spine and slowly down the arms and legs. Draw your attention to every single body part one by one and just let things be sitting with any discomfort that you have without worrying. Number five, try to reduce your use of social media and electronic devices and even consider not watching the news too often. I find that not much changes from day to day, so perhaps try every other day or if you can, try weekly. Number six, sleep is a cure-all, yet only half the UK report getting the right amount of sleep. So try creating a sleep routine. Choose a time for going to bed and a time for waking up and allow extra time for falling asleep. If you can give yourself a total of eight to nine hours of time, that should do it. Try not to use your devices just before going to sleep and use night mode as well if you have it on your phone. Finally, if you already have joint or muscle pain, anxiety and stress can actually increase the amount of pain we feel. Tension can cause muscle spasm and the muscles themselves can become painful. Many people get anxious about back pain, especially if it doesn't get better as fast as they expect. You may get conflicting advice from your family and friends, and you might even get conflicting advice, conflicting advice from doctors and therapists, which can make you uncertain about what's best to do. It's best just to trust the advice of one qualified professional at any one time, and try to be wary of the stories that friends and family members will tell you with the very best intentions. They may not be relevant to your particular symptoms, however similar they may sound. Remember, serious damage is rare and the long-term outlook is good. So don't let fear and worry hold you back from your recovery.